What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Space Hulk Ascension. I'm beginning to think, I was kind of looking at the map layout, it might be a better idea for me to just block these spawns. And then, oh he's actually inside, I didn't even realize that. Oh, you can actually sort of pseudo hold these down. Oh, without a third person, interesting. Well, I'm going to have Eeyore be right here. Just in case, I want to close everything on the same turn, and what I'm going to try and do is I'm actually going to try and block every single spawn instead of actually closing them, and then all in one turn we'll close them. I think if we can block every spawn, I don't think they have any ancillary spawns on this map, so we may actually be able to finish this fairly quickly, assuming this position doesn't fold over here. That's the big thing, is if that position falls, then eh, we're in a little bit of trouble. Now we, have, we may fight to a stalemate to the extension that once we block these off, more may come out of other holes, which will make it so that we have to close these and then come reinforce to hit even harder at another location. But for right now, I like it. I'm okay with the situation. Let's go. Is your overwatch on? Your overwatch is on. I just want to make sure everybody's watch is over. Okay. There goes the mine that we had placed. So that's good. That's actually going to be pretty helpful for us. The Gene Stealer AIs have taken some modifications in between here and some of the previous episodes. So when I first started playing the game, the Gene Stealer AI was a little bit dumber. And now the Gene Stealer AI is actually doing some smarter things. It thinks a little bit harder nowadays. It actually like tries to hide behind corners and do all kinds of nasty things now. I don't know that I'm going to be able to advance with him. But similarly, nor do I feel like we're stuck in position either. We've got a whole bunch of people out of ammo down here, so let's go ahead and let that happen. We'll go ahead and throw a few extra bullets in the gun right there, and you know what? Deheat it. I don't even care. Actually, no. Step forward by one. You've got enough space. Well, never mind. This might be a bad idea. This is relying a little bit heavily on him to do his job properly, which makes me worried. Oh, well. I think there's another door up here, too, maybe? No, there's no extra door right there. Oh, so they have to come out this way. Hmm. All right, well, that raises an interesting point. My preference right now would be this. I need this guy to, like, really, really do work on this turn. And, in fact, I may have just messed up. Let me take a look here. No, that actually works out okay. I think. That should be that should be fine. I'm gonna have him help with this position down here. Both of these actually. Because I think we're gonna have to do some gymnastics in order to get this wrangled. Definitely gonna have to put a foot behind an ear or something in order to make this work. Overwatch is still looking good right here, so I guess we'll keep him on that. Frame rate really it's the fire too. The fire is causing problems. Because the second the fire is off screen, it all gets happy again. It's like, yay, no more lag. Let's go down here. I gotta get this flamethrower caught up. I don't think there's any reason to leave anybody else on this side. I'd love to have a librarian over here, but unfortunately it's just something I didn't think about soon enough, so... Gotta live with what we've got right now. I may use the flamer to press this position up. Oh, there's two positions. There's three. Oh. Okay, that's unexpected. I didn't realize there was an extra position right there, which is weird because it's glowing in blue. So I probably should have. However... In the larger scheme of things, it's not the biggest blunder Splattercat's ever made. This guy's life is still in danger, but with a flamethrower down here, and additionally with this guy, we should be able to have him go this way. He can pin this down from wherever they're coming, and then over here, he'll just be able to flame this out and then capture this. We'll have this guy, if he survives, we'll have him swap positions so we can bring the flamethrower to bear around some of this stuff over here. But as of right now, I'm pretty, pretty happy with our positioning. I don't think there's really anything to be too nervous about. In all honesty, is oh, I was going to say, I forgot to put him on Overwatch, didn't I? All right. So put those right there. Everybody's taken care of. These guys are all still looking really, really good. I don't know if I should close these or not and just sort of advance to a different position. I just don't know. Maybe I should. I'm having, sec I'm having second thoughts about my strategy here. I think either way we're going to run into the same problem when we get to another point, so I think what we may do... Yeah, let's just close them. Let's just close them. We're going to have a similar problem whether I block the spawns or not. 
basically this would just be I wasn't rationalizing it properly in my head so I was thinking that they were still gonna have the same spawn allocation they were gonna have a lower spawn allocation for some reason with me standing on these which they don't closing the bulkheads is basically making it so I don't have to leave my guys standing around doing nothing for long periods of time my god that chug okay well now that we've done that onwards to the next turn I suppose once more unto the fight, my friends. Once more. Okay, looking pretty good right there. This is the flank to win right here, though. It looks like we've been marginally successful right there, but that's fine, actually. That's perfectly okay. Is that closed? That's open. Oh, good. Okay, well, I can get you down to here. How many AP do you have? Let me guess. You're the guy with four AP. No, you got six. Okay, so with six, one, two, three, four. Eh. I might be able to jimmy rig this a little bit better. That did give me a second to think about it, though. I may have him go this way instead, but I am going to need him to open up this door if that's how it's going to go down. And that leaves me in still somewhat of a precarious position right here because I've got to watch his back now. But I think this is definitely accomplishable. I think this is something that's within the realm of possibility. And sometimes with harder missions like this, that's just what you've got to look at is within the realm of possibility, what can you pull off from this position? And so the goal for right now is just going to have this flamer take this position right here. And then once we take this position right here, we'll leapfrog it, we'll capture that. Right now, we're actually fairly well on our way to winning. Clear of path. I'm going to try and keep them out of each other's hair right now. By having them each go down a different hallway. And we'll have them flood into here like a giant nasty flood. We're going to have them flood like a flood. Dem metaf- no, them similes though. Dem similes. What is that right there? A scything talent? It looks like we're actually getting a pretty good push from right there to the extent that it might be viable to start moving our flamethrower back. I think that guy's actually got an attack chance on us. So instead, I think what I'd rather do is I'm going to move him down here so that he's outside the range. We've got nobody right here. I think I could push that one conceivably with two more AP. I can. So, let's do it then. I don't think that one can get at me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, he gets an attack, so yeah, he can. I have made a mistake. I have made a mistake. A mistake which was now be remedied. Alright, so that may have cost us right there. I may have done something Stay stupid. Alert, that may have cost us a Marine. Luckily, we're at the point right now, in my haste to try and lock this off, we may have a separate issue to deal with now, which is unfortunate. It does not please me at all. I'm going to have him do that. I wish they could store up AP for the next turn sometimes. It seems like it'd be really, really good. Like maybe like a feat or something that allows you to save up like an extra 2 AP. If you don't use things, all right, well, we're sort of just going to have to hope on this turn, but I think he's going to get this guy. Oh, really? They're not going to go after my flamethrower troop, huh? Oh, no, he didn't make it. Okay. Well, that's all perfectly fine, then. That's all fine and diddly doodly dandily. Oh, unless that's a broodlord, and it is. Okay, well, the goal now becomes self-preservation. Okay, and so he managed to make his shots. That was a fairly pivotal turn for him. Had he not made the shots, I'd be kind of nervous right about now. He's got enough ammo and enough heat to where I think he can deal with that guy by his lonesome. Over here, they may overwhelm this position. I don't know. We'll see what happens. With 3 AP, he's going to be able to actually... Here, oh, he's on Overwatch. Okay, I was going to say, why does he have so little AP? Hold on. What has gone wrong here? Because something has most assuredly gone wrong. Okay, so now with 3 AP left, what I need him to do is... 
Overwatch. He's actually got a fairly considerable chance to hit him, but I think I'll I'll leave that where it is for right now. Let's unjam you. We'll take our shot first. Just in case. Oh, you got two shots? Oh, never mind. I need to reload. There it is. All right. Well, hopefully they do something fantastical over here today because if they don't, this is going to get real, real hairy real, real fast. What does that leave him with in terms of AP? Not a lot, but it should be enough. That move is actually very, very risky and does not at all lend itself to my trust. Either way, though, it's got to happen. Otherwise, we're never going to take this down here. So let's go for it. No sense in hesitating. No sense at all, because hesitation is not a bank. Okay, so from right there, we should be able to keep ourselves better contained, unless that's a Broodlord, but... Eh? If it's a Broodlord, then I guess the <laughs> the jig is up anyways if it's a Broodlord. The jig is up anyways. I'm going to leave him back by a space, just in case it is... The jig is way up if there's a Broodlord down here, so... I don't think Broodlords can... Well, they spawn from up here, so maybe they can. I don't know. My only hope right now is that... Oh, I just thought about that. Well, this strategy may fall on its head very, very shortly. This may not work out for us. I don't know. These gents. I would prefer for them... to begin moving in directions that are beneficial to our strategy and overall chance of survival. I think we have more than enough space marines that now, even if one of these positions decides to fold, we should be okay. Where is the pathway to that right there? Oh, you've got to go back and down, like, around the corner and, you know, do a ball. Okay. So that's cool, I guess. I don't know. They'll probably spawn a bunch from right here on the next turn and cause me some major headaches. I don't like our positioning right now, but if we can survive this turn, we'll be in a better one. That's unfortunate. It was a Broodlord. And he's not going to get an attack, huh? Can he not attack and fire? Or how come he didn't... I feel like he should have probably owned my flamethrower guy. I think my flamethrower guy should have died right there. All I can really do with him is run away. Ooh. Okay, so... With little time to consider otherwise... Hmm... This turn is going to be very, very important. It's going to be a super important turn. Well, that Broodlord came at exactly the wrong moment. Exactly the wrong moment. Oh, man. What do I want to do? This whole thing is about to fall apart. Like, the best I think I can do is have him, like, sell his life, basically. I think that might be the only real strategy here. And even so, that flame isn't going to go far enough to make it work. And he can't get far enough? I don't suppose... No, he's way too far out. Okay. Okay. Well, damn, I need like one more space in order to make that work. I think we're going to lose our flamethrower guy no matter what we do here. This could be a really bad turn for us, which leads me to believe it may be a wise choice to push this way. And try and get this locked off, or maybe try and force them to split this slightly. Scanning for enemy movement. Hmm, I think he's gonna die no matter what I do. Yeah, either way, 
if he goes this way, he kills this guy. If he goes this way, this guy dies. And what I think they'll probably do is they'll have that guy go that way, and then these guys will go this way and wipe out this entire position. That Broodlord was all RNG, too. I, it was a blip. There was no way for me to know that was going to happen. Oh, we may have just lost the mission based on that, actually, because this position is not going to be seizable. Well, this single corridor, being able to spawn a Broodlord in a single corridor like that, where there's no, they could actually win this map by just continuously spawning Broodlords, because there's no hallway right here that has a long enough overwatch to kill a Broodlord. Kind of an interesting observation. Unless you, you could take this position first. You have to take this position first. I should have pushed this way. That might be the problem. Is I should have taken the flamer, gone that way, and then pushed this way and had him face that way. But even so, there's still not enough spaces. Eh. All right. Well, instead of worrying about that dumb shit right there, let's start worrying about the dumb shit of all different colors that we've got to deal with up here. Since he's overheating, I would actually suggest... They will fall. The machine spirits have answered my prayer. ...that we make some attempt to advance along this side and take this position. Stay alert, brothers. With bolters, obviously this is going to get a little bit tentative, but as I start bringing other people around and over, we should be... And maybe a little bit better shape. I don't. I don't even know what to say. It's. It's kind of a mess right now. We're gonna have to make a concerted effort on this point after these three die, which I think they will on this next turn. I think it's just kind of like RNG got us right there. I don't know if you would count that as being outplayed by the AI, but I wasn't counting on one of those blips being a gene stealer, and I really have no contingency plan to deal with. I'm sorry, with broodlords. I have no contingency plan to deal with broodlords anyway. So, eh. Aside from maybe dropping like a force lightning on them, I'm not sure what I could do to fix this situation. And I don't think his range goes out that far. Yeah, you'd think psychically it would just be like everything would be contained in his range, but whatever. Can't be helped at the moment. All I can really do on this side is make sure that I hold them off for one more turn so that they can't do that split strategy. So now... It's a method of self-preservation. I'm going to leave his back exposed over here in the hopes that this guy will go this way and not this way. If he goes that way, then I guess we got our flamethrower back and I'll try and collapse him into here. But that means that this guy is now trying to defend two separate directions, which is not going to work. It's going to be nasty. I shouldn't have dropped that servo skull right there. It's really hurting our performance right now. That servo skull was the worst idea ever. I... I got nothing else for all of you. I got nothing else. I very sincerely have nothing else for you. So, unfortunately, we're going to have to push this, too, at some point. With what character, I don't know. I'm kind of afraid to use my flamethrower to push positions. Because that has completely and totally countered my strategy here. Alright, let's find out what happens. Okay. So, not what I would have preferred but still slightly manageable, I guess. Okay, not super manageable, but... Yeah, I think this position's done. Wow. How do you even conceivably deal with that many gene stealers? Holy shit. I don't even know what to do right here. I... He can't place equipment on a door spot, unfortunately, which is a problem because I could have put in a landmine. I'm going to have one of these guys take position right here as sort of a backup plan, I guess. Don't really have much of an option. And let's worry about...
Oh my god. Like how many at five, eight, eleven, ten? It's probably the result of me flaming out this hallway now that I'm thinking about it. They will fall. Entering. Hmm. Objective locked. As a counterpoint though. It doesn't appear as though they're even remotely trying to defend this position up here, so... Objective locked. That does sort of leave us with a pleasing little opening to maybe attempt... a point grab. I just don't even know right now. This is going badly enough to where... I'm gonna need somebody over here. Come support him just in case they try and outrun him right now. And then over here with my librarian, I need somebody to take this hallway while he goes and caps that over there. I'm gonna put him in a better position to maybe hold off some of these gene stealers. But I have no real plan right now for how we're gonna take all of this. This down here, these two are gonna become Really, really bad, actually. Hmm. Methinks perhaps an assault cannon was recommended. You know how I said the assault cannon's kind of situational? Well, here's the situation. <laughs> I, I wish that I had an assault cannon right about now. I should have brought one, maybe. There was no way for me to know how this mission was going to turn out, but you know what I mean. Can you flame that out at all? Oh, you can? Hmm. I'll save it for later. I don't want to waste any more ammo right now. We're probably going to lose most of squad one, I think. We are moving. They are close I mean, there's always that weird off chance that we hold right here. I mean, there's always that weird chance that it might happen, but... Oh, he did. Does he have to defend? He does. Okay, so yeah, that's what I was going to say. We're going to fold over here. There's no way. And there's nothing you can do about it. I don't think with five guns in an open room all watching you could take care of this many G-Stealers. So aside from the fact that our flamethrower, it's all because of that Broodlord. That was basically... My aim is true. That was basically the AI going, checkmate. <laughs> now we have to worry about these guys coming through the vent over here and flanking. But I don't think we have to worry about it for too long. Just kind of got to watch this hallway for right now. We got two people both trying to do their best over here. I don't know how we're going to take that point. I have... Wait, does it not... Oh, okay. Interesting. So I think the way to actually get in there makes you go around or something? I don't know. It faces this way. Or is it up here? Oh, it's up there. Oh. Okay, so we're going to have to make a little bit stronger of a push here. On this side, on the plus side, the fact that they were focusing wholeheartedly on that other position has made it so that this position is going to fold fairly easily. So, these are the decisions that the AI hath made. We don't question them or concern ourselves with them. We just kind of keep going. So, actually, what I may do is try and keep this like this, maybe. Moving. I need him to batten down the hatches with a quickness over here. So, am I missing somebody? I feel like I'm missing somebody right now. One, two, three, four, five, six. We've lost three guys. There should be... Who's unaccounted for right now? Two, four, six. We have seven guys. There's some... Oh, never mind. Seven. Okay. That's what it is. I, was gonna say, I feel like we've got somebody unaccounted for right now. I may have to use a psychic storm in order to clear this out. 
This is going to get a little bit iffy. Even for these two, this is looking like a pretty nasty hallway to have to deal with. Okay, so you're both on Overwatch. God, this is going to suck. Especially if they flank from that way. If they flank from that way, I think there's tangibly no way we're going to hold this position. They're going to flood out and it's going to be over. I may actually need to re-divert somebody else now that that position's taken. No, what are you doing? Oh my god, don't- what? I clicked way over there, man. Why did you turn around? Oh my god, sometimes the controls in this game. I clicked on him, and it turned him around for some reason. Don't ask me why. They actually might need help over here. And so I'm going to re-divert this guy real fast. He's going to come down here and he's going to take this position in case they manage to get past the doorway. Basically just multiple layers of failsafe here is what I'm trying to do. I think that should be fine. I think we're really just going to end up with a big dog pile over here is the problem. The flamethrower might be useful to have over here. But I need somebody to watch this guy's ass right now because they can spawn and then come down this way. So... Once again, not a whole lot that I can accomplish from right there. I feel kind of dumb for fiddling around with this point like I did. I should have done something differently. Assaulting this point right here is really, really, really going to be... Because it's just a pinched hallway like it is, you can't get any guns brought to bear on that. Like, I don't know how to fix this situation because you're about one Broodlord from getting dominated in any case. Because the Broodlords just walk through the fire. I definitely think this is probably where we wanted to bring the Assault Cannon. Yep. I think I messed up. It's okay. I, I, we can make it work, I think. But you guys are good. You guys are okay over here. As a precaution... Eh, that seems far enough away. I don't think they can get over here. The worst case scenario is I can flame out the hallway and keep them from going that way. They are close. They come. My weapon is jammed. Yeah. We are going to have to work these little dudes. I mean, that cleared out the hallway fairly well, but... Not that well. Not enough to make me feel better about the situation, that's for sure. Over here, what I would prefer to do... Is... Ooh, I don't like that situation either. I don't like that situation. One tiny iota. Why iota? Alright, let's... Turn him. Let's get this next bulkhead down. We're halfway there. I mean, honestly, we're not doing that poorly. We're not doing that well, either. I will point that out at this point, but... You know... <laughs> you takes the blessings you can get. I would really prefer... Advance, brothers. I'm gonna try this. He's still not exposed, but his melee skill is nowhere near as good as the last librarian I had. Hopefully this guy can make his shots. I can't... Eh, let's move him up just in case. I mean, the most shots he's going to get is two anyways, so we might as well just kind of like... Sneak him forward. And try and make that work. I didn't notice we had our two squad leads over here. That's an issue as well. But now, we can actually cross this firing line and make things a tad more safe for this group. These guys both overheated, and that's perfectly fine. As long as nothing gets through, I don't care. All right, so you guys are all functional. With a three-way overwatch, we should be able to, this little barrage et toi, I guess is what I would call it. I, I suppose that should be enough to hold down that position. Once again, re-diverting him down to here might be a suitable plan. We're hoping that neither of these is a broodlord. If it is, then there was no way to know, and we're going to die. The same thing is going to happen to us over here that happened over here, if that's a Broodlord, and there's really nothing you can do to stop that from happening. I... meh. Oh well. Such is life. A lot of general shootery to be finished down here. I'm 
a tiny bit concerned, yeah, that that was going to happen right there. Luckily, we have a librarian on the scene, so we can fix that. So it's not too big of a deal. But still... Yep. Ooh. Looks like all of them resisted. That's troublesome. Okay. Well... Step him back slightly just in case we make a new Broodlord friend. If he's right there, that'll leave him with one. Unfortunately, that is not what I require. I don't even know if you can get over there is the problem right now. We're stuck in a very, very precarious position where putting a flamethrower in any position is going to expose him and make him kind of a giant target for Broodlords. Their spawn allocation right now is definitely high, though, too. Essentially, I think I'm just going to try and ride this out. Since so many of these guys, almost everybody resisted that lightning storm. That's not good. That leaves us in a very, very... Oh, I could have used the force field. Ooh, I hadn't thought about that. I didn't even remember that I had that. See, I'd like to see if this is navigable right now. And maybe confuse the gene stealers a little bit by forcing them to play outside the way that they would prefer it. I think these guys will be fine with their three-way shooting down here. Instead, what I'd like to do is I'm going to bring the flamethrower up to here. And what we're going to have to do is, oh my god, my cat just landed on my shoulders. That was the worst. Not right now, kitty. I have, oh, look, you're breaking stuff. Been up here for like eight seconds and you're breaking things. What did you break? Something just fell. I saw it fall. Oh well. Such is the joy of owning kitties. The joy. The absolute and utter joy. Alright, so we got that taken care of. I'll probably put him on Overwatch just in case because he'll get two shots, I guess. But this guy's probably about to die. I bet there's a Broodlord in there somewhere. There has to be. There's no way there's not a Broodlord in there. I would have spawned a Broodlord if I was playing the Gene Stealers. I would have totally spawned a Broodlord. Okay. Wow. I don't know if you guys could hear that, but it sounded like a helicopter just buzzed my house. Alright. Let's hope it doesn't have a spotlight on the front of it. That'll be enjoyable. This is it. Let's find out what hath occurred up here in the top left-hand corner. And whether it is... Or is not avoidable. Yeah, that's what I was concerned about. As I say, there had to be a Broodlord up in there somewhere. There's no way that there ain't. So the next thing that I would recommend is we're still going to keep backstepping him, basically. I need my flamethrower in a position where it's going to be useful to me. Actually, oh, he can block that spawn right now. Ooh, the temptation is real right now. That leaves him just wide open for anything that comes out of that corner. But it goes for the throat of the problem, which is what we really, really need right now. I've got a move. I can do this. I've got a move. It's not an amazing move, but it is a move. I think Axel... Yep. Axel can handle that for me. There it is. So we'll keep them out of our hair for right now. They've already filled up every single slot right there. So the next thing that I need to do is I need to save my flamethrower fuel and I need to save my psychic lightning because taking these two positions down here is going to be Normandy. It's going to be really, really bad trying to take these positions. No joke. It's going to be a mess. I have no idea based on how curvy these all are. I should have taken these first, I think. I think these are actually the two. Had I known how these hallways were going to be configured, I would have taken these first, these second, and actually I would have taken this last, actually, because this is the easiest here because you've got a three-way approach point and you can fill the entire room with fire if you need to. So that means I can step him out of there. 
He's still got... He's divisible by 10, huh? Nothing's going to come this way, I don't think. Even a Broodlord is not going to be able to make it that far. Like, one, two, three, four. Yeah, so it should still be all right. Worst case scenario is I take this guy and I run him backwards a little bit to stop the Broodlord from getting to him. One, two, three, four. Yeah, he still can't. I, sh I think that should be fine. I think we should be in good shape right there. The lag is real right now. The lag is so real. What's weird is it doesn't affect the mouse cursor, strangely enough. Typically, in games, I notice that when the frame rate's bad, it affects the mouse cursor. But here, mouse cursor, unaffected. Unaffected. Okay, so on that side, we're still good. It actually looks like we might have an opening down here. I don't know if I want to press that, though. It might get a little weird. This hallway terrifies me. I hate this hallway. This hallway makes me just feel awful. This weird little Tetris-shaped room that they've given us. Actually, it's not Tetris-shaped. I don't like it. I don't like it one bit, and I'm still just, like, kind of staring at it, trying to figure out how we're going to make this work. Unless there's an approach vector this way that I have not seen, I do not see this working very well for us. It does look like there might be, though, so maybe that's the secret. Maybe there's a line of fire. There is. There's a line of fire right there. Oh, okay, so now I don't think it's actually quite so bad because I could go a line of fire right there, a line of fire right here, a line of fire right here, a line of fire right here, and then you just wait for the spawns to be have a gap in them, and then this guy runs in and caps that real fast. Guy on this end does the exact same thing. I think we still got this. We lost a bunch of our newbies, but I'm not really too concerned about it. I'm going to break the episode off right here. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerdcast for the next episode of Space Hulk Ascension. I look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Take care out there, everybody, and hi do.